first last screen was the luxurious Southern Crescent, a holdover from a previous era that survived past the dawn of the Amtrak era. Now, the second to last last train is a similarly stubborn, luxurious land cruiser. Named for Zephyrus, Greek god of the western wind, the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad Zephyr was one of the illustrious named trains from a bygone era. The first train to bear the Zephyr name was the California Zephyr that started in 1949 as a train from Chicago to Oakland, California, operated jointly by three railroads. Chicago to Denver was run by the Chicago, Burlington, and Quincy Railroad. Denver to Salt Lake City was run by the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad, and the final leg from Salt Lake City to Oakland by the Western Pacific Railroad. The train was luxurious and scenic, scheduled to carry passengers through the Rocky Mountains during daylight at the utmost degree of comfort. The train came equipped with five legendary domed observation cars for taking in Rocky Mountain vistas and attending to passenger needs was a crew of Zephyrettes, intended to rival the elegance and glamour of airline stewardesses of the early jet age. Zephyrettes were the face of the California Zephyr and took care of every passenger want and need, going so far as to disembark to purchase a requested item for passengers, then take a taxi to catch up to them later. Zephyrettes had to be between 24 and 28, 5 foot 4 to 5 foot 8, and either a college graduate or a registered nurse. Despite the national trend of shrinking ridership, the California Zephyr maintained strong ticket sales into the 1960s, in part due to its status as a luxury sightseeing trip rather than a time competitive mode of travel. Of the three railroads that operated the California Zephyr, the Western Pacific Railroad was the smallest, and by the 1960s, the increasing cost of operating the train made the losses too great to bear, and Western Pacific petitioned the Interstate Commerce Commission in 1966 and then again in 1969 and 1970 to discontinue their leg of the California Zephyr. During these petitions, there was strong public support for keeping the train. During the hearings on the train's future, a Zephyrette named Susan Hill testified in support of the train. She noted that even as the train was in its decline, Hill said that Zephyrettes had taken on the responsibility of apologizing to passengers for mechanical delays, broken heating and dirty rooms, and that on one trip she had eaten moldy food in the dining car. She still supported its continued operation and believed in its future. As an eventual compromise, the Interstate Commerce Commission let Western Pacific discontinue its leg of the California Zephyr, and the two remaining legs from Chicago to Denver and Denver to Salt Lake City were split off into their own routes in 1970. We're about halfway through, so how's the audio doing? I know my viewers love audio. You're always talking about it in the comments. I actually just finished recovering from major audio issue. In April, I had gender affirming surgery and the breathing tube inserted during surgery paralyzed one of my vocal cords. It's just like a freak thing that can happen during any intubation, but for some reason it happened to me. My voice was something I was really proud of and losing it was really scary. So anyway, I hope the audio in these videos has improved. It took a long time to get to the point where I could get on camera again. Now we're back at the same point in time from the last video, May 1971. On April 30th, 1971, 392 regularly scheduled passenger train services departed for the final time, marking the end of an era. The next day, Saturday, May 1st, only 174 of those trains would continue operating under Amtrak. So why did the Zephyr not join Amtrak? And then what happened to it? Initially, the Denver and Rio Grande Western Railroad was in talks to transfer the train to Amtrak, but it didn't pan out kind of similarly to the Southern Crescent. 
The railroad felt that the sum they would pay to Amtrak would be greater than the cost of operating the train for the near future, and again the Zephyr wasn't in terrible financial shape. They also feared that if they gave the route over, Amtrak would eventually increase its frequency and that would start interfering with their more profitable freight operations across the Rocky Mountains. So on Amtrak day one, two Zephyrs left the station. There was the Rio Grande Zephyr that would run tri-weekly between Denver and Salt Lake City, and Amtrak's daily San Francisco Zephyr that would make a full trip between Chicago and Oakland. The Rio Grande Zephyr met up with its less luxurious Amtrak cousin in Denver, but then, since one of the concerns was allowing Amtrak to use the railroad's valuable track, Amtrak was forced to cobble together a much less scenic route through Wyoming. The Zephyrs would sort of meet up again in Ogden, Utah, where passengers were taken by limousine or maybe bus from the Rio Grande Zephyr to the San Francisco Zephyr after the Rio Grande Zephyr arrived in Salt Lake City. Passengers would ride almost exclusively between Denver and the mountain resort town of Glenwood Springs on the Rio Grande Zephyr. So supposedly the eastern portion of its route was busy and possibly even profitable, but the remainder of the trip to Salt Lake City was nearly empty and during the winter the train had little ridership at all. The Rio Grande Zephyr continued losing money, starting at around half a million a year in the 70s, and nearly $3 million annually near the end of its life. One of the commonly attributed reasons for the high costs was the labor for providing a luxury train service, and sure enough, when the route was transferred to Amtrak, the engineers and conductors stayed on, but the staff of 20 waiters, stewards, and cooks were laid off. The final run of the Rio Grande Zephyr was on April 24, 1983, almost 12 years after Amtrak's day one. It ran on a shortened portion of its normal route. Mudslides had wiped out the track between Colorado and Salt Lake City just days before. Amtrak then took over and realigned its San Francisco Zephyr onto the more scenic route that the Rio Grande Zephyr had taken and christened the new train with the old California Zephyr name. With the Zephyr down, we're coming up on our final private intercity train in America. Its reign as the last train in America is not going to last very long after the Zephyr, but I think it's an incredibly interesting story and one that I'm really excited to tell. So check back in for the final installment of the series. <laughs>